The question of whether Jesus Christ actually existed is a topic of historical inquiry that has been extensively studied and debated. While contemporary evidence for Jesus outside of Christian sources is understandably limited, several items of evidence support the historical existence of Jesus. 1. Early Christian Sources The New Testament documents, such as the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, provide the most detailed accounts of Jesus' life, teachings, and crucifixion. While these texts are religious in nature and written by believers, they are considered valuable historical sources by scholars due to their early dates of composition and their inclusion of specific historical details and eyewitness testimony. The writings of the Apostle Paul testify to the story of Jesus and were written only a few years after Jesus' time. 2. Non-Christian Sources Several non-Christian sources from the first and early second centuries make references to Jesus and early Christianity, albeit in passing. These include the writings of the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, the Roman historian Tacitus, and the Roman governor Pliny the Younger. While these references are brief and primarily serve other purposes, they corroborate many aspects of Jesus' life and the early Christian movement. More information about this later in this video. 3. Early Christian Communities The rapid spread of Christianity in the decades following Jesus' death is considered by many scholars as evidence for the existence of a historical figure who inspired devotion and belief among his followers. The growth of these early Christian communities and the willingness of many individuals to endure persecution and martyrdom for their faith suggest a genuine belief in the person of Jesus Christ. 4. Archaeological Evidence While there is limited archaeological evidence directly related to Jesus himself, archaeological discoveries in the region of ancient Palestine have provided context and corroborated certain details mentioned in the Gospels. For example, discoveries such as the ossuaries bearing names mentioned in the New Testament and the remains of first-century Jewish settlements help support the historical reliability of the gospel narratives. Also, the Alexamenos Graffito is quite interesting. 5. Historical Consensus The overwhelming majority of scholars, both religious and secular, accept the historical existence of Jesus as a firmly established fact. While there may be debates about the interpretation of specific events or teachings attributed to Jesus, his existence as a historical figure is widely regarded as beyond reasonable doubt. While these lines of evidence support the existence of Jesus as a historical figure, they do not necessarily confirm every detail of his life or the supernatural claims made about him in Christian theology. That part requires faith, something Jesus addressed directly. John 20:29 20, says, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. The historical Jesus remains the subject of ongoing scholarly investigation and debate. As mentioned, the primary sources for Jesus' life and teachings come from Christian texts. But there are several non-Christian sources from the first and early second centuries that make references to Jesus and early Christianity. These references provide valuable insights into the historical context and the impact of Jesus and his followers. 1. Flavius Josephus, 37, 100 A.D. Josephus, a Jewish historian writing in the late first century, makes two references to Jesus in his works. The first, known as the Testimonium Flavianum, appears in his Antiquities of the Jews, and describes Jesus as a wise man and a doer of remarkable deeds, who attracted followers and was crucified under Pilate. While the Testimonium Flavianum is considered by many scholars to have been partially altered by later Christian scribes, it is generally believed to contain an authentic core. The second reference is found in a passage about the execution of James, the brother of Jesus, where Josephus briefly mentions Jesus as the brother of James. Scholars agree this reference is unaltered. 2. Tacitus, 
56 to 120 A.D. Tacitus, a Roman historian writing in the early 2nd century, mentions Jesus in his Annals, where he discusses the persecution of Christians under Emperor Nero following the Great Fire of Rome in 64 A.D. Tacitus refers to Jesus as Christus and describes him as the founder of the Christian movement who was executed by Pontius Pilate during the reign of Tiberius. 3. Pliny the Younger, 61-113 A.D. Pliny, a Roman governor and writer, wrote a letter to Emperor Trajan around 112 A.D. seeking guidance on how to deal with Christians in his province who were being accused of various crimes. In his letter, Pliny describes Christian worship practices, including their habit of meeting before dawn to sing hymns to Christ as to a god. 4. Suetonius, 69-122 A.D. Suetonius, another Roman historian, mentions Christians in passing in his work, Lives of the Twelve Caesars. He refers to disturbances among the Jews in Rome instigated by Crestus, which scholars interpret as a reference to Christ, and the subsequent expulsion of Jews from the city by Emperor Claudius. 5. Mara bar Serapion, 1st, 2nd century A.D. A Syrian philosopher, Mara bar Serapion, wrote a letter to his son from prison sometime after 73 A.D. In the letter, he refers to the unjust treatment of wise men throughout history, including the killing of the wise king of the Jews, which many scholars interpret as a reference to Jesus. 6. The Talmud The Talmud, a central text of Rabbinic Judaism compiled between the 3rd and 5th centuries A.D., contains references to figures and events associated with Jesus, albeit in a critical or polemical context. These references are generally hostile and aim to discredit Jesus and his followers. For example, in the Babylonian Talmud, Sanhedrin, 43a, there is a passage that describes Jesus as a sorcerer who practiced magic and was executed by the Jewish authorities. While these passages do not provide independent confirmation of Jesus' existence, they reflect the awareness of Jesus and early Christianity within Jewish communities. 7. Lucian of Samosata, c. 125-180 A.D. Lucian, a Greek satirist and rhetorician, wrote a work titled The Passing of Peregrinus, which includes a passing reference to Christians and their founder. In the text, Lucian describes the followers of Peregrinus Proteus, a cynic philosopher and self-proclaimed prophet, as imitating the customs of Christians, including their veneration of their founder, whom he sarcastically refers to as the crucified sage. While Lucian's reference is brief and mocking, it indicates awareness of Jesus and early Christian practices outside of Christian circles. These non-Christian, extra-biblical sources provide valuable external confirmation of certain aspects of Jesus' life and the early Christian movement, helping to corroborate the historical reliability of the New Testament accounts. While they are relatively brief and often tangential to their primary subjects, they nevertheless attest to the presence and impact of Jesus and his followers within the broader historical context of the Roman Empire. Speaking of that, there is an interesting little piece of archaeological evidence that came to light a few years ago. I mentioned it a moment ago. It is called the Alexamenos Graffito. It's a piece of ancient graffiti discovered on the Palatine Hill in Rome, dating back to the late 2nd or early 3rd century A.D. It depicts a caricatured figure with the head of a donkey being crucified on a cross, while a smaller figure nearby appears to be worshipping or venerating the crucified figure. Accompanying the image is a Greek inscription which translates to Alexamenos worships his god. The graffito is widely interpreted as a mocking depiction of a Christian believer named Alexamenos by a non-Christian individual or group. The donkey-headed figure on the cross is intended to ridicule the Christian belief in the crucifixion and worship of Jesus Christ, while the smaller figure represents Alexamenos himself. The inclusion of the Greek word theon, God, indicates that the crucified figure was perceived as the object of worship for Christians, but the derogatory portrayal suggests mockery 
rather than genuine understanding or respect. The Alexamenos Graffito is significant as it provides evidence of early Christian presence and persecution in ancient Rome. It offers a glimpse into the attitudes and reactions of non-Christians toward the emerging Christian movement in the Roman Empire, illustrating the challenges and opposition faced by early believers as they spread their faith in a predominantly pagan society. The graffito also serves as a reminder of the diversity of beliefs and cultures in the ancient world and the tensions that could arise between different religious groups. I think it is fairly clear that the man Jesus actually existed as a historical figure. If you appreciate my work, like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Thanks for watching.